ELMB or Extreme Low Motion Blur, also known as ULMB and a whole load of other names, is the process of strobing a monitor's backlight, so turning it on and off rather quickly, to reduce motion blur in games. That's pretty much the main selling point of this ASUS VG24VQ, and so we're going to take a look at it and see if it's actually worth your price premium money. But first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. So like I said, ELMB is the process of strobing a monitor's backlight to reduce motion blur. Now I recorded some high speed footage of this happening, a bit of a trigger warning for any epileptics out there as it gets a bit flashy, but basically you can see it happening. The display or the panel turns on for enough time for your brain to see the image and then turns off again until the next frame is ready. When done right, this can give a whole new level of clarity and sharpness, especially in games, even as good as the old CRT displays. Now ASUS have clearly tried here. It's not perfect, but it's also not the worst you, you could buy. It's a, a kind of in-between. Now unfortunately because of the backlight strobing, it can be a bit difficult to show you what's happening on screen with cameras, so apologies for the, the black bars, but uh, I'll zoom in to, to show you what I mean. If you have a look at the UFO and the, the alien's head, you see ghosting both in front and behind. This is actually with it set to its maximum turbo mode in the on-screen display, and you still get that uh, sort of ghosting on either side, no matter what setting you have it in. When gaming with ELMB on its normal setting, or sort of the, the first stage of ELMB being turned on in the menu, I can't say that it was a glaringly obvious improvement. While I still had a great time playing on it, it's also not something that I, I actively noticed an improvement on. And then when I switched it to the turbo mode, I honestly got a headache almost immediately. I'm not sure whether this is just me or, or whatever else, but I thought I should report it since I, I can't play games with ELMB on its turbo mode with this display. Now while we're talking about the panel, let's take a look at the, the usual measurements, starting with input lag. I was using my Time Sleuth as usual here, which is obviously an HDMI device, which I should add, it doesn't seem possible to turn ELMB on for HDMI, only the display ports. Uh, but with that said, it's a fairly usual result, so around 11 milliseconds in the center of the display. And when it comes to the panel's response time, that looks to be anywhere from 5 to 6 milliseconds, which is pretty good for a VA panel, but also not the fastest, and definitely not the fastest compared to, say, a TN panel instead. One other weird quirk that was a little hard to capture on camera is actually the haloing that I mentioned around the, the ghosted image. That was happening on very specific specific dark colors uh, with the, the mouse cursor having a sort of halo around it as if the monitor had local dimming zones and was you know HDR was not enabled but the local dimming zones were it was quite strange to see it was a bit hard to capture in camera not a very big deal but again maybe something to note colors wise in the monitor's sRGB profile it was covering around 97% of the sRGB spectrum which is decent enough for a gaming monitor and I think somewhere around the 70ish percentage for the Adobe RGB and and DCI-P3 spectrums too. I would note though that the calibration was pretty far off when I, well, calibrated it. Uh, and so if you are planning on using this as say an editing display for your, you know, game clips, whatever, maybe pick up something like a Data Color Spider X and calibrate it before you use it as your, you know, editing monitor. What about gaming on it? Well, that felt pretty decent. It felt no better than pretty much any other 1080p 140Hz monitor that I've tested, uh, even with ELMB on, but I should mention that it does have FreeSync, but it seems like when you enable FreeSync in the on-screen menu, that disables ELMB and vice versa. Well, there was a very short period of time where I think I had it uh, with FreeSync enabled and ELMB on normal. That seems to just not be a thing that uh, can happen anymore. So um, generally speaking, ELMB will have to be off for FreeSync to be on. So just make you aware of that. Otherwise, it's a fairly standard display. I wasn't hitting any absolute banger shots, at least none more than I usually would, which is already not that much. So there you go. And yeah. Felt like a pretty solid display, but nothing too much to shout about. So what else do you get on a fairly price premium monitor? Well, you get all of the usual adjustments you would expect, including a good amount of height and tilt adjust, a good amount of swivel as well, and rotation if you want to put it in portrait mode, which actually isn't the worst idea considering the viewing angles in this 
are pretty decent. You also get a fairly limited set of inputs. You get one display port and two HDMIs, and that's pretty much it. No USB hubs here. And you also do get a fairly tight curve here. It's a 1500 millimeter radius curve, uh, which is a little strange for such a relatively small display. Not a big problem, just a little, um, yeah, strange. For the price that it's currently at, it's a little hard to recommend. For around £40 less than this, you can get a comparably fast IPS model from AOC, the 24G2U, or if you're willing to spend a little bit more, about £50 more, you can get a 1440p 144Hz VA monitor, again from AOC, the CQ27G2X. So unless you really want ELMB on a 1080p 144Hz VA monitor, I'm not sure that this is the, the one I would go with. Now that's not to say that it's a bad monitor, it's definitely not, it's actually pretty decent, it's just slightly strangely priced. Now with that said, those are my thoughts and I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of ELMB on this style of monitor? Would you prefer to see that on say a TN panel where you might get a bit more benefit from it with a, a much faster panel? And generally speaking, do you care for curved, uh, you know, small monitors like this? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you want to check out the VG24VQ, then I'm going to leave a link to it in the description down below. That's an Amazon affiliate link. It will take you to your local Amazon store. We can see pricing when and where you watch this because it can and does vary. You can also check out the rest of the links in the description down below too if you want to support the channel. There's a whole load of stuff you can check out from stuff like uh, Overclock UK affiliate links if you're buying from there, uh, VPN options, Hub Bundle for cheap games to support charities, and Streamlabs OBS if you want to start streaming, merch or hoodies or t shirts like this one, and just a load of other stuff. So, feel free to check that out. You can also check out that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And I'm going to leave the monitor reviews playlist over on the end, which should include things like the AOC monitors I mentioned and a whole load of other ones as well, if you want to check that out. Otherwise, that is pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. But otherwise, we'll see you all in the next one.